Hi all. Okay, so here today is actually my. Um, I can still hear myself. Sorry. Today is actually my favorite session. So it's go to market. A lot of today deals with branding and marketing. Um, this is the fun part, right? This is the part where. Um, can you click on the? Thank you. This is the part where um, you get to figure out what your brand identity is, work on some of your logo stuff, and play around with the part that actually feels like, okay, yes, this is, this doesn't feel as much as work as maybe some of the other stuff, right? So uh, commit reaching the market. What do you want or what do I want my brand to communicate? How best to communicate that message and spreading the word, your brand identity and promise. Creating a brand. Inputs and considerations are your target customer alignment, your brand values, your brand promises, points of contact and longevity. Okay, so let's talk about some of your favorite brands or some of the more noticeable. We'll take a few minutes to um, talk about those and then we'll move on to the next slide. I could talk about this stuff forever, so I will try not to because we have our mentors, I promise. Um, so think about a brand that stands out to you that you feel familiar with, that you trust. Can you guys think of one? So there you go. Can you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like five Starbucks cups. Here. Um, but okay, so what do you what do you feel when you see that sign? What are the first things that come to mind besides I'm going to be nice and jacked up on caffeine? <laughs> Open Anything? Concept of location. Okay. So do you feel like you trust the brand? When it comes to your copy and knowing that you're going to get a pretty decent product most of most of the time, um, do you feel right? Do you? Okay. Expe it is expensive. <laughs> it is definitely expensive. <laughs> Consistent. Okay. So McDonald's is a good brand for consistency, right? Regardless of wherever you go in the world, the fries will always taste the same. And they pride themselves in that. Although, I, I'm with you, girl. I'm with you. <laughs> um, but it, well, the one thing you'll notice is as you travel the world, the actual food may look different depending on um, where you are, either the Middle East or Canada even, or you'll have different menu items, but you'll have consistently certain items on the menu that you know won't change, right? And the fries are a good example of something that everybody loves that stays consistent. Okay, uh, anybody else? Any more examples? Sorry? Target? I love Target, one of my favorite places. Um, but that's, that's another good brand. I feel comfortable going there. I prefer it over other large stores that are similar to, and I'm not, going to say it, I feel like my product is always going to be better quality than some other similar said competitor. There you go, from said competitor. Trader Joe's, I like Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is a good brand. Um, that's, I think it's uh, quality food, right? Decent price. Um, Apple. Apple's a good brand. They're very simple, Nike. Um, I'm, I'm the walking Stanley. Okay. I'm, I need to talk to you about the Stanley cup and that whole, uh, TikTok that's going around where the husband walks in with this huge, yeah, that's, I don't know if anybody's seen that, but it's really funny. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but those are all brands that you trust, right. That are familiar for me. Apple is a big one. Wherever I go, I see that Apple, the iconic Apple sign. I know what it is. I know what store it is. I know my product is going to be a good product, maybe some bugs they're working through along the way, but overall, a really good product, and I'm going to get great customers. Okay, uh, consider these elements. Names of competitors should distinguish the business from others. Message it communicates consistent with business image. Uses of the name, primarily written or spoken. Domain name availability, online presence options, business description to reflect or not, i.e. Holiday Inn versus Amazon registration and trademark. Uh, Company marks are IP to be protected. Um, so here's an interesting question. How many of you guys actually looked to see if there was a website available with a similar name, if you've already decided what your business name is before establishing your business? Oh, interesting. That's probably a really good idea. Um, 
commit communicating your brand promise. What do you want your customers to experience? So an example that we'll go back to is McDonald's, right? The consistency of their fries. Wherever you are in the world, you will go back and you'll have certain products on the menu that you know will be a taste of home, right? So regardless of where you are, it's familiar. You don't know what to eat. You see a McDonald's sign, you're traveling somewhere. That's where I'm going to go because I know exactly what I'm going to get. So, um, and that's the customer experience, right? For McDonald's, regardless of where you are. Uh, does anybody have some examples of what you want your customers experience through your business and your brand? Let's take a few in the room, maybe three in the room and three online. It was just a funny joke um, from an account like on social media over the weekend. It was like, um, if you had to explain the user interface and it's not good enough, or it was, it was some type of actual joke, but that was kind of the point of it. Is if you had to explain your product nowadays, especially, it's probably not intuitive enough for anybody to want to use. Okay. Does that mean your product or your brand? So if somebody looks at your brand, anybody else in the room? What is, oh, here you go. So with our brand in particular, with our brand in particular, our company is named Perfect Peace Productions. And so with that being said, we pretty much strive ourselves in making sure that we remove the guesswork and the complication that come with setting up various aspects of media from photography, videography, to graphic design, setting up websites, et cetera. So for those people who may have issues with not knowing where to start or not knowing exactly what that process looks like, we like to simplify and streamline it so that way they can go through that process from start to finish. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay, so Amazon is from A to Z. We are aiming to be from P to P for a lot of seniors and people who are not familiar with technology. What do I mean when I say P to P? From photo shoot to printed products, we have you covered all the way through. You don't have to go searching for someone that's going to do a video for you, someone that's going to do a website for you, someone that's going to do a, a flyer for you. Whatever you need media-wise, we have it. And so we're offering simplicity. Okay. Maggie, is there anybody online that wants to share? Nobody has put their own stuff into the chat. Okay. Okay. Well, let me know if anybody does. Anybody else in the room? We got one more taker. Okay. If you do, let me know. Um, I'll jump to the next slide. Okay, developing a marketing, a marketing strategy, the positioning statement, what the product service is, why it's special, the target market, the competitive landscape, the competitive advantage, and the brand promise. Commit, selecting market channels, marketing mix, the five Ps, product, what you make or provide, where you sell it, what someone is willing to pay, how someone hears about it, who or who customers interact with. So for promotional strategies, you have advertising, publicity events, and content. Um, how many of you guys are doing online for selling? How many of you guys, oh, a good amount. How many of you guys are doing an actual mom and pop shop, a storefront, you? Okay. And, okay. Have you, but you're going to still market using online methods, I'm assuming registration. Okay. Four channel categories, digital, website, email, search, social media, online ads, webinars, videos, podcasts. Um, with social media, I, although it's, I, I want to include, um, what do you call them these days? Your social media influencers. So influencers is probably a big one targeting the right influencer for your brand to go online. Um, print is your regular stuff, your business cards, flyers, direct bill, brochures. Traditional is publications, so review journal, signage, billboards, broadcasts, um, events, so networking, community, trade shows, or trade shows in store. So um, a good example of this is uh, our last cohort. We did have 
um, an individual that did, um, it was, what was it? Uh, wedding, like, she's a wedding planner, so event planner. She'd actually go to the bridal trade show and that's where she'd market. So she'd go out, hand out her cards, have discussions, um, eventually made enough money to get her own booth to share some of. So that that's an, a really, really good target market for her. Um, so it's a really good idea. And we live in the world of trade shows, guys. We live in the world of, you know, big oh, look, Dell world is going on right now. So if you guys are doing something in tech, maybe that's where you want to be. You know, just walk around, talk to people, go to different booths. Um, I know we see some mentors in here. Do any mentors want to chime in? No. <laughs> No, I just wanted to know if any of you guys wanted to chime in with any of these um, discussion slides. No? No, okay. Uh, did you have a question? Okay. Next slide. Select marketing channels. The customer journey. Um, what's your problem? Customer realizes unmet need or desire. Awareness. They hear that you, that your offering might meet their need. Consideration, they research your offering against other offers for fit, purchase. They decide to buy and become a better customer. Advocacy, provided a good experience, uh, they spread the word. So we talked about, um, it was consideration, right? We talked about why uh, in the first few sessions, what makes your product different and what makes it better, right? So this is a part of that. Okay. Commit digital marketing. The focus of brand design, relevance. Does, does, does the design communicate the essence of the brand and what it stands for? Consistency, are the elements of the brand used consistently? Professionalism, do the materials meet the expectations of the target audience and how they view good branding? Has anybody already started their branding journey where you have your logo and, oh, there's a lot of people, um, and you've already kind of established what your your strategy is going to be online versus, I'm happy to see that. <laughs> uh, commit, getting your customer's attention, the rule of seven. The rule of seven states that a prospect needs to hear or see an advertiser's message at least seven times before they take action to buy. Tell a brand story, make it simple, make it memorable, make it inviting to look at, make it fun to read. So Maggie's actually got a really good, um, a really good story. Um, I think Jeff is here somewhere, but um, Jeff Sailing remembered a jingle of a brand, but couldn't remember what the brand was, um, which, which is really good. Cause I mean, they remember the jingle, but for the life of them, couldn't remember the name. So let's make it memorable. Even if you have a jingle, I, I think, you know, try to consistently say what your brand is because I'm the same way. I remember a lot of jingles. I have no idea what they're from. Um, commit distribution and sales. The method companies use to sell and deliver products or services to their target market and the means by which are distributed. Distribution and analysis. Where and how does a target market shop for similar products or services? What distribution channels do the top competitors use? What distribution channels are being used in the industry? What are other distribution channels are being used successfully in other industries that may uh, have an impact here? What typical barriers or challenges for entering new distribution channels are foreseen? How effective is the current selling method in meeting future goals? Example, in-house staff or intermediaries. What distribution channel might be used to accomplish these goals? Um, let's stop for a second. Let's take five minutes for you guys to answer these questions. Um, what I'd like you to do is, after those five minutes, talk to your neighbor, discuss what your answers are, um, and then we'll have some people share. Okay. Okay, so Rikshana, to just try to catch up with you there, Ron is saying that uh, they want their customers to feel that they want to simplify their life at work, and also that we care about their privacy and data security. And Carrie mentioned that she has already started on her branding journey. And Leah also has a logo and an idea of online branding. And then Ron's like the luckiest guy in the room because he has a co-founder who's a branding and design expert. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, that definitely worked out for you. <laughs> 
It is definitely a leg up. <laughs> if we have time, I think what I'll do is um, I want to show you a brand um, at the end. I'm pretty sure we will um, at the end of this, my session anyways. It's a very familiar brand in Canada. And um, mm -hmm. I worked for them for about five years. Uh, tell us. Um, I worked for them for about five years, but I grew up with their brand. And they did something really interesting. Rather than using people, they use animals and nature. And you can, you'll notice that it's their brand without even their logo or their, their um, iconic T. Um, just by seeing a leaf, you're like, okay, yeah, that's, that's TELUS on a billboard or a bus stop or something. Um, I'll, I'll share some pictures in the end, but I do think it's interesting how, how they, they kind of pivoted from using a lot of people to more. Can I ask a question? Oh. Yes. Here you go. Is uh, this is kind of I'm thinking this uh, of as a um, uh, a brand promise, but it's also kind of a slogan, uh, mind bending lifespan. Oh, I mean, there's I'm loving it. So okay. Okay. <laughs> why not? I mean, it's I want to live longer. Yeah, and the mind bending part because it's about cognitive, yeah. right? As well as mind, so it's the mind bending lifespan so that's i was just wondering if that falls into the category as because it's kind of a slogan and a it is promise. a slogan um so it, it's the same thing it's like mcdonald's has their slogan i'm loving okay. so i think it's it's the same idea okay. i probably use it a lot but I, I make it consistent so if you are doing any marketing material your brand or your logo should be the focus and then your um the yeah. the statement or that okay. should be secondary to that okay um just checking in to make sure i'm not crazy no uh, we can get other people's feedback too this is the part of why you're here you want to talk to people in your classroom That's as well and, and get feedback <laughs> <laughs> well if anybody has any opinions or thoughts for him please do reach out um one second we got one question here then i'll come back to you okay so your brand should be identifiable even without your logo. Without your, yeah. So colors, text messaging. It needs to stay consistent. It needs to be the same. Yes. Yeah. So, and I, and that's where I want to take you guys with TELUS is the consistency. Why it's so familiar, even without the actual logo. Here you go. Um, you getting confused about the distribution channels because if it's, if it's a service that's been do I just say they offer the service online when you say how do the competitors, uh, what distribution channels do our top competitors use? Yeah, if it's online, then if that's your distribution, then it's online. Okay, oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, sometimes, yeah, you, you over, you'll overcomplicate it, but it just might be as simple as that. Any other questions in the room? Any questions online, Maggie? Oh, in online, they're sharing their logos. It's really fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, I'm curious. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can. Although Carrie does say that she's looking for a social media strategist or assistant who can help with the sales funnel. Okay. I think we're at our five minute mark for in class. If you guys want to buddy up and discuss. Um, let's take some time to do that. And then we will go around the classroom, have a few people just answer a question or two, maybe not the whole thing, but a question or two from here. And online, you guys are already way ahead of us with your discussions and sharing of logos. <laughs> um, if you wouldn't mind for the people who do have logos, maybe if you guys want to, if people want to see them later, drop them in the Slack. Um, if you are willing to share so everybody in class knows uh knows what that is. yeah if you can later just to you know it's they're doing it online right now so in the chat calvin's really into the swag uh, ron is asking online if the recordings are available and they are they're linked in canvas
So it's one playlist, there's one link, but when you go to the playlist, you can see each separate session. Okay. Um, let's get started back up. Hi guys. Hello. Hi all. Hi. Everybody's like, uh, I'm busy right now. Hi guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start off with some people online. If you guys want to grab maybe a few questions and just share what your answers are, um, I think that would that's a good place to start. So we'll do two online and two in the room. Okay, Peggy, is there anybody that wants to share? No, we just heard the question right now. Oh. We need time. <laughs> the question, <laughs> the questions here on the, okay. on the slide? All right, so we weren't exactly following that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you go in the room first. Then you went rogue. Um, <laughs> So anybody on uh, in the room, um, if you want to answer a question or two, just to get a discussion started, um, I, I really like to share and have some kind of collaboration. I think people, um, it helps people understand other people's perspective and might even help their own. Here you go. Uh, Patty Zapparoli with Four Life Business Management Services. And I'm struggling with this because I'm still trying to figure out who my actual target market is. My, the, the big one, Sam, Sam, Tom. Tam, Tam, Sam, Sam. That's small business. Well, there's 40 million of those, so that's too much, and they run the industry, like every industry. So my, I'm B2B, so definitely online, um, and also referrals because of the I'm a business solutions provider, and then either LinkedIn or Facebook. Again, depending on that target. If I'm targeting um, the trades, I probably would be do better in Facebook. If I'm targeting a professional organization, probably LinkedIn. So oh, it kind of depends. That's, actually, that's a good response. So I need to nail down the target before yeah. I can figure out what the distribution is. Okay. I like how you're using different social media platforms for different targets. That's you're already you're already ahead of the game. Anybody else? On my way. Oh yes, if you wouldn't mind, sorry, standing up and sharing. I project. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, so my name is Alexis McCurdy. I own Green Farewell's Crematory. It's not the funnest thing to talk about, but we do. Um, our business, we actually cremate by water. And so we talked a little bit about um, our target market is generally online. Um, generally, people are searching for somebody is expired. I have an emergency, and that's usually how they find us. Um, however, what's fascinating, our competitors, most of their distribution channels are institutional. So they are foot trafficked into hospice agencies, hospitals, et cetera. And so they've built relationships with the institution itself for the referral versus ours are more business direct to consumer. So we're, we're shifting a little bit to try and get more of that actually be out in the community to build those referral relationships as well. But it is a strike contrast for how we're getting our business right now versus our competitors is definitely institutional. Okay, so I actually have a question for you. So hang on. To it. Okay. Um, so it was a question on here that what I, what makes you different? So you say you do it by water. Mm -hmm. It's it's part curiosity, mm -hmm. part understanding why you're mm -hmm. better than yeah. Also, you'll never run out of a morbid joke. I get, this question. I get the question all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. So, oh, oh okay, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so Green for Wells Crematory. So we, we specialize in alkaline hydrolysis. And so what alkaline hydrolysis is, cremation by water. Why that matters to Nevada and why that matters to Las Vegas in particular, Nevada has the highest rate of cremation in the country. Every cremation emits about 550 pounds of carbon. Yep, every, every cremation emits about 550 pounds of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, every single cremation. That is the equivalent of driving around the city of Las Vegas five times, okay? 
So when we talk about having the highest rate of cremation in the country, we are talking about potentially an environmental crisis, right? Especially with the expiration of the boomers, we've, we've got an environmental crisis on our hands, especially when you think about our air quality, right? And the amount of people coming to the city. Um, so for us, what we tell our families and we tell our community, you, you get the same result with a lot less energy and a lot less carbon emissions into the atmosphere. So it is 95% water, 5% potassium. It's the same makeup that's actually in your body. It's nothing fancy, it's just potassium scoops. Um, our process is slightly longer, a little bit more intimate, um, but absolutely better for the community. Um, and since we do have a boutique type of service, families ask a lot of questions and we're available to be there for them to answer those questions. Um, so it is, in my opinion, what makes us better is it does serve the community and serve the family and the environment at the exact same time. Um, but we do have an uphill battle for people to know we exist, just like right now. You can be cremated by water. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Um, so we're, we're trying to break through and let people know that these options exist, trying to build those institutional relationships as well so we can build trust with the institution. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Yep, sure did. That's it. You, you have a customer online I, ready, I'm ready to buy. I don't know who's... Whose dead body they have, but. Huh? Oh, what's the business name? Green Farewell's Green Farewell Crematory. Okay. <laughs> Fair, okay. All right. Green we have Farewell. two people online who would like to share. Okay. Take it away, Maggie. <laughs> All right. Leah, go ahead and unmute and tell us about your channels. Sure. Hi, all. Um, can you hear me? I'm a bit congested, so. You sound fine. Oh, thank you. I definitely have a bunch of tissues around me. But um, yeah, I, I'm i developing a language learning platform. And when I did my research, I found that um, competitors are mostly posting their lessons on like YouTube or sharing on Instagram or TikTok. And what I want to do is create my own platform so that my, my customers or clients are subscribing. Um, so that would be how the payment plan would go. And these questions are making me think at this stage of development, do I, is it the best use of my energy to create my own platform? Or maybe I just get the word out via, you know, a few short lessons on these already pre-existing platforms. Um, so that's one thought. And then later on switch to more of a, you know, a, a subscription base or something that I can safeguard, right? Um, and another question that comes up is, I don't want to be dependent on another social media channel for my business. I, I am happy to use it to market and to get the word out, but I do like the idea of, you know, having, having control over that. I, um, Megan, and I think you're better answering this, but I, um, I would try the free route just to test it out and then, and then create your own site. I that I mean, if some of those other channels are are free for you to use, play around with them, get familiar with them, see what you like, what you don't, and then go to creating your own. So I just want to understand a little bit more, um, Leah. It's it's the notion that you're going to have software developed. You're going to have an actual application to do it, and so you're wanting to test it before you make that investment. I think that's a great idea. Yes, correct. I am, um, <laughs> I'm kind of like, ooh, basically I'd like to model it off Peloton. Um, I really like how their platform, like the app is easy to use. Um, one of my value points I'm proposing is, you know, ideally I want this language platform to be accessible globally to all um, you know, Filipino diaspora or immigrant communities around the world. For now, I'm focusing just on the U.S. Since I am Filipino Canadian American, I feel I understand this market best. And I hear you, um, Roxana, about talking about using the available platforms. I also hear what you're saying, Maggie, about testing out. But the the idea I really feel drawn to is something like a Peloton app, where people can access lessons 24 seven, regardless of where they are at different lengths of time. Okay. That still doesn't mean that you have to develop something 
a, the platform right away. Yeah. Gotcha. You can, you can still have a playlist on YouTube, you know, and that's available wherever they are. True. Yeah, no, thank you. I, um, I, I really like these questions because it's making me think, right? It's making me pause and think. <laughs> So thank yeah. you both. Uh, Rakshana, do you want to do another one in the room before we go to Rachel or do you want Rachel to go? Yes, yeah, so I have a hand up. It's well, hold on. Can, can Rachel go or do you want to go? Okay. Ron, Ron can go. <laughs> He's usually online with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm speaking for Lois. <laughs> <laughs> Camera's right here, Ron. Okay. Go ahead, take it away. Right. So I'm speaking for uh, Fernando and uh, Louis, right? And um, we're talking about how to frame competition, right? The competition discussion. And it's actually really, can be really helpful, right? It's kind of lame to say, oh, we don't have any, any competitors, right? Because anyway, we know that's lame. So, uh, but you can use that as an opportunity to sort of use that as a way to some, some of our, some of our solutions, some of our products can be complicated. So it's really easy to say, like, for example, my last FinTech company was kind of like Chime, but better technology. So I'd say my tech, my company is like Chime, but better technology. Uh, Louie has a really cool, uh, mushroom product that is, and I was like, he started talking about, is that like Rise? And he said, yeah, it's, but it's better. And I said, tell me how it's better. And he said, well, we use the fruit in the body of the mushroom rather than they use this. I think he used the word shit, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's, that's an example of how you can use, the, use talking about your competition as a way to sort of frame how you're, it, it, make, it, it can make, it, make your product easier to understand. And it can um, you know, tell explain how big the opportunity is like my competitor chime has five million customers and there it took them 10 years and i have a better technology and it's five years there you go so that's what we talked about is, is the com competition in the context of using it to frame your solution nice i need you to attend more live sessions ron okay <laughs> <laughs> um maggie go ahead okay so rachel it's your turn go ahead and unmute Hi, thank you. Um, I, I just had a comment. Well, I, I do want to talk about uh, my challenges that I am facing. Uh, but uh, green thermals prematurity, that's awesome. I, unfortunately, we just buried my nephew a couple of months ago and we did use these, this service. I think we called it aquamation. Is it the same? Is it the same thing as the aquamation? It community? is. That is her, she said. That is her. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. I just, we just did that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. And I, I, not, I'm not that I'm rushing to pass away, but I'm definitely going that route when it comes. Um, but to answer some of the questions here in regards to the uh, distribution analysis, um, it's right now at this time, what I'm facing as far as challenges and barriers is that um, most dispensaries and cultivations is uh, um, vertically integrated companies. So the cultivation companies more than likely owns the dispensaries. And with, uh, so uh, a couple of years ago, the dispensaries sued the Cannabis Compliance Board because of the type of license that uh, that was awarded in 2022, which is a consumption lounge license. And, and anyone that lives in Nevada knows that it is against the law to smoke inside of a, a, casino, or a hotel and also in public. And so when a tourist would come down uh, more than likely they would come to a place where they don't have to worry about purchasing and not knowing what to do with it. I remember riding in Ubers and being offered so much cannabis that it's not even funny because they were afraid to take it on the plane. So what I'm, what I'm uh, going through right now, as far as the challenges is having the dispensaries even talk about uh, selling cannabis to me or any of the uh, consumption lounges altogether, the ones that are operating right now, like the Planet 13s and the New Woo, they all have cultivation. So that cultivation then in turn sells to the dispensary and that's how they're able to get their sales. So does Smoke and Mirrors, which is under Thrive and also Planet 13, which has a dispensary of course also inside. But when it's coming down to people who are trying to open these lounges, um, it's very difficult to find anyone that's actually willing to sell um, based on the fact that 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 takes money from them, it pretty much takes money from them, and so yeah, that's one of the barriers 
Um, it, it may look, and then not only that, it's not like I can purchase in any other state. We have a, a seed to sell system here where it's tracked and everything that's grown here has to be sold or you know purchased. We have to purchase here, but the difficulty is finding it. Um, the only suggestion that I have or how I would be able to get that goal accomplished is going before the Cannabis Compliance Board, which I do every month, and uh, rally and talk about uh, maybe the Cannabis Compliant, Compliance Board itself um, giving themselves a license to sell to the new uh, entities, the new consumption lounges that are coming into uh, you know, the state of Nevada. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. But yeah, I, I, I wasn't thinking about that until until now. That's interesting. Um, so interesting fact. So when I worked for the city, I actually um, counted all of the business taxes that came in from the cannabis uh, business owners. And there's very limited distribution licenses. And I think they're all accounted for. And mm -hmm. I think the only way you can get a distribution license or for like cultivating and selling is by buying it from somebody or something that already exists. Um, right. It's complicated. So good for you for showing up to those meetings and stuff. Continue to do that. There's there's a lot of red tape with it, but um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity there too. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there anybody online, Maggie? Else? Yeah. Yeah. Miguel um, would like to say a few things. Go ahead and unmute. Well, Miguel's unmuting. If you're, if any of you are interested in knowing, every dollar that came in smelled like weed. My office would smell like weed for about a week after that. There's my complaint. Okay. <laughs> Miguel's ready now. Okay. Thanks, Miguel. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Perfect. So, um, so mine is a free society LLC, and you could say that I started backwards. I bought my domain. I started my logo, and I just started going, I went in on that and then realized I have no clue about how to pitch a business. So that's how I ended up here. And so, um, so I, I have like this idea, right, to a, like a more modern approach to therapy, one that has, it's a little bit more up to date. I feel like there's not a modern approach. Every time you see, you know, I just seen better help. I just seen this new platform called Alma, which is something similar to what I want to do more online if you know people are preferring to uh, work I mean not work but do everything online now so it's like face-to-face uh, -face is kind of becoming a thing of the past I've realized even though I prefer face-to-face -face. Um, and so I want a new approach to it I want to make it almost I'm, I'm tired of seeing sad pictures on you know or somebody doing this or uh, like I'm, I'm tired of seeing like uh, like a negative outlook on getting therapy. I want to make it more accessible, more like a cooler approach, more up to date. Uh, I want to include AI and not only that, but since face to face is a thing of the past, I want to incorporate, you know, maybe people don't want to talk to a person. Maybe they want their an avatar to be something of their life. They're into plants. You know, you choose a plan. You feel comfortable with talking to like a, a dog. You, you choose an avatar as a dog, whatever the case may be. I just want something to make it more accessible, not only accessible, easier. I just want a different outlook or a different perception to be put onto it. And since I myself am like a living, walking proof that if you really put your mind into healing, uh, I mean, anything is possible because I have a really unique story, a really unique upbringing. Um, and until I got in a car accident five years ago, which I broke my femur and I had, to, it was the first time in my life I had to sit still and really pay attention to what was going on inside my head. I feel like that's when I started healing and through the power of like meditation, intense therapy and, and journaling my whole process of these four years, which I do music as well. Um, it, you know, eventually it, the hard work paid off and I was able to uh, turn my life around and I'm really proud of myself. And I feel like it's, it was one of the hardest things to do a couple months ago to take a FMLA leave from uh, my job. And I did it because I had enough of, just the nine to five and, and all that. And I just feel like there's a big stigma behind mental health. They they frowned upon me. Everybody was calling me kind of just being like, you're the man, you're the man of the house. You need to do this. You need to do that. And, you know, I don't regret it at all because I landed myself here. I started an LLC and I have like all these ideas and I just, uh, I've always started everything backwards. So with that being said, 
I got the logo and everything done before I even had anything that we started working on since the beginning. So we're kind of just playing catch up with everything. Miguel, I am glad you're getting to a better place mentally. Uh, first, let me say that. Um, Thank you. Really important. Um, and it's interesting because it's a culture thing too, right? Uh, it honestly, is. Yeah. Um, I come from a similar culture where we don't believe in that, right? It's your problems are dealt with in the home. And so um, any way I can help you, you let me know. Um, reach out to me. Um, okay. I'd love to see how I can help. Um, Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Anytime, Miguel. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, okay. So commit and dis distribution and sales. Always be selling. Like you just did. Uh, what is it? <laughs> the cre the water crematorium. Yes. You just gained a whole bunch of customers. Um, so four stage selling process, selecting the target, engaging the prospect, uh, making the match, doing the deal. And that's all we got. So <laughs> while we have, while we're here though, what I'd like to do is give you guys an example um, before we go anywhere else. Um, uh, what I mean by TELUS. So this is TELUS. Uh, TELUS is a telecommunications brand in Canada. Uh, what they try to focus on is, as you can see here, are a lot of animals. Somebody made a point earlier about branding staying consistent with colors. The one thing that TELUS does for every member that they onboard on their team, there's, th there's four weeks in a class. A week of that is understanding TELUS branding and why it's so important for emails or anything that's being shared by employees to go out. I did a lot of their advertising within for TELUS International here, um, not only growing up with the brand, but they drilled into me that we have specific colors that need to be approved. Any branding that needs to go out, you need to double check to make sure that it's on point. If I go to Canada now and if I see this little guy, nothing else. Not the TELUS, not the T, just that I know it's a TELUS. I, I automatically know. Um, and they do a lot of this. And uh, the animals are just a playful way of them showing not only do they care about the environment, but they also use it as a cute way of marketing. Um, a funny story is uh, you see, I think it was an elephant, that elephant right there. There was one in the Vancouver Zoo that people thought was being, I think, mistreated. Um, so they ended up adopting her because everybody kept complaining to tell us about it. Um, so that's, that's kind of what the branding is. Their significance is it's fresh, it's fun, it's noticeable. Nobody else is doing it. People love it. They took it one step further. They made Beanie Babies. So their animals are now Beanie Babies that are all collector's items, which is really cool. But like I said, I know it when I see it. I know it by the colors. I know it by the white background. I know it by the animals. And they also went into nature and flowers. This guy is the big favorite. So it helps you understand what that branding is. Apple's the same way, right? Let's look at the Apple brand. Apple keeps it clean. If you see an Apple ad, they don't need the logo. It's just an Apple. There's no Apple written on there or anything. It's literally just an Apple. Oh, that's the old school logo. Do you guys remember that? How many yeah. people remember that? Um, but, oh, the history of the Apple logo. That's funny. Um, but it's always, it's always been an apple, except for here. I don't know what happened in 1976. But whoever came on board after that and came up with this logo was brilliant because they've stuck with it and it hasn't changed. There's different variations of it, but it's always an apple. Okay, oh, sorry, one question in the room. Okay, here you go. So something to remember about Apple and its branding is they spent the last 30 years getting to the point of that simplicity. Yeah. So that if you look at their marketing in the very beginning, the first 20 years from the 70s to the 90s, 
they always accompanied their logo with really detailed ads about what they did and who they were. And they also targeted people and told them, why do they need a personal computer? So there's a lot of education. So like one other important thing is branding isn't just what you think your company is. It's what your customers and the Perfect. public think yeah. your co company is. So to your point of the TELUS uh, elephant, people associated that elephant with TELUS. Which and now they, yes. now they were kind of like, hey, let's adopt it and help that, you yeah. know, so just keep that stuff in mind. Well, it's consistency too, right? So if you, like you said, it was included in a lot of their ads, even before it was just an Apple that was noticeable. It's consistency in the branding that helps you identify that. So it's 30 years of consistency. Same with TELUS. Um, okay. Shana? I so Ron online points out that the one that you didn't understand in 1976, it's a little bit busy, but it's actually Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree. Oh, <laughs> That makes so much sense. <laughs> How do I blow? I need to go into, I need to figure this out. Now I need to make it bigger. Hold on guys. Maybe you could just search for the 1976 Isaac Newton logo. Okay. Well, you can kind of see it on the bottom. Scroll down. Oh. <laughs> oh, it doesn't like me. Hold, please. Hold, please. Abort. Abort. Hold on. I just want to see the image. Okay. There he is. And there's the apple. They should have used Adam and Eve. There's the, <laughs> <laughs> there's the apple. Okay. Um, so for everybody, or actually, let's open up a few minutes of questions. Um, if anybody has uh, any questions uh, online, Maggie, and we'll take some from in the room. Okay. I'll wait for questions online. <laughs> any questions online? Any in the room? If not, then we're wrapping up a little bit early. Um, which means, oh, we have questions. Hold, please. So the problem with my branding is that it is so very similar to an industry-wide branding okay. that happens. So I'm not sure what to do about that because it's something that I see all over the place. I see it in birth settings. I see it around child care. Mm -hmm. I see it around just anything advocacy around children and families. It's something that I see everywhere and I'm not sure what to do about that other than try to find someone to make a new logo because it's the dynamic of it is so similar. So. Um, sure. yeah, uh, so I, the question in the room was, can I describe it? So there is, think of a circle with people kind of like arms around each other. So you have a head and then you have arms around each other. And in the center, it's another head with a shape and a smaller like baby like. So like big person, little person being held. So it's the community around the uh, parent and the baby. So yes, there's, there's a lot of logos like that. But I yeah. mean, um, I am, although I love branding and I love this part of the session, um, I'm sure we can find you. Maggie, do we have any branding mentors? Um, yeah, Liz. Liz Goodgold. Liz, she's here, right? Liz is not there. Liz is up north. Oh, Liz. Okay. Um, so we do have one. You should talk to her. Um, her name is Liz. She is a part of our mentors. You go on Slack, reach out to Audrey. Um, uh, come connect with me after. Audrey's um, one of our startup NV people. Uh, no, um, but I, I will help you reach out to her on Slack to help you connect to that mentor um, so you can get some, because I think that's a good conversation to have, because I have seen that logo for different and a lot of healthcare. So yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll connect you with the right person. Any other questions in the room or online? Nope, okay. Okay, uh, thank you for everybody online. Um, just a friendly reminder, if you want to share your logos, uh, drop them in the Slack. I think it would be kind of fun to see what everybody's working on. 
No class on Monday, Memorial Day. I will right. miss you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I will, uh, for uh, anybody who wants to share their logo, please feel free on Slack. Don't feel pressured. If you feel like it's not ready yet, great. If you want some feedback, ask for it. We're all here to support each other. Uh, for the people that are in class, your mentors are here. Take the next few minutes to go use the restroom, grab a drink, do whatever you need to do. Next class is Wednesday. It's next week. Now when I say next week, it actually means next week. <laughs> huh? Monday, no class. Um, so take a break, grab something to drink, a snack. And before you meet with your mentors, you guys have a few minutes. Uh, everybody online, I'll see you guys virtually next week. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, everybody.